Hello Outriders, I'm your host Kosashu and today I'm gonna present to you the best Pyromancer build ready for launch day. The Pyromancer, just like the Trickster, felt a little bit weak to me compared to the Tectomancer and the Devastator. This is because the four skills that we unlocked during the demo do not give us a reliable and constant method to get our heal back. Let's start with the basic and explain what that is. So the Pyromancer is a mid-range class, so its place is not in the face of the enemy, but it's also not at the back of the battlefield. Despite the fact that with this build you can easily play at the back of the battlefield. As the Pyromancer you receive an additional 10% bonus to your anomaly power and your skills mark enemies for 15 seconds. Killing a marked enemy heals you for 24% of your max health, that's our healing mechanic. And that's where the issue lies, our cooldowns to begin with are a little bit too long and don't allow us to reliably mark enemies and be able to kill them to get enough health back. But with this build I believe I've overcome this. So let's go over the class skills first. So we will go with Archmage which increases your anomaly power by 6% and we will go with World of the Blaze which reduces the cooldown of our explosive skills by 15%. With this build we are a glass cannon but we are also a safe glass cannon easy mode glass cannon if you will we want to maximize our anomaly power and we want to get our cooldowns as low as possible we will not invest anything in firepower and we will base most of our damage on our skills and our weapons are just there to help a little bit with sustain and maybe disable or slow down the enemies so for our skills we will go with thermal bomb which is an explosive and interrupt and select an enemy to burn, interrupt and deal 63 damage to. If killed, while afflicted by the skill, the enemy will explode dealing 541 damage within a large radius. This is a brilliant skill to use on lower health monsters because you will be able to kill them quickly and they will explode and basically obliterate everything around them. And it also inflicts burn on the enemy so you will get healed when that happens. For our second skill we will go with Heatwave, which is an Ignite skill, so summon a Fiery Wave that deals 85 damage and inflicts burn all to all onto all enemies in its path. Brilliant skill, has decent amount of damage and because you can inflict burn on multiple enemies you can get quite a bit of heal back. And for our third skill, and this is where I believe that the Pyromancer really shines, is Overheat. The skill is an ex an explosive and interrupt, so we get two interrupts which is brilliant against captains and bosses. And the skill deals 17 damage to all enemies within a large radius and interrupts their skills. Enemies afflicted with burn receive 218 damage instead. The burn will be consumed. So the strategy is that we inflict burn effect either with heat wave or with a thermal bomb. And then we overheat dealing massive damage and getting healed. But the, bear in mind this 17 damage here. I will show you how that will be boosted to over 50. Now for our gear, we want all our armor pieces to have anomaly power bonus. For our headpiece, we will go with Big Boom, which increases the explosion radius of our thermal bomb by 20%. For our chest piece, we will go with Tidal Wave, which allows us to cast Heatwave one more time before triggering cooldown. So we get two Heatwaves every round. For our trousers, we will go with Sunburn, increases by 46 the damage that have their statuses consumed by this skill. So if you ignite a few enemies and you use overheat, you will deal 46 extra damage to each of them. For our gloves, and this is the centerpiece of our build in terms of gear, we will use pants on fire. That's a little bit counterintuitive. On our gloves we've got pants on fire, but there you go. Increases by 46 the damage to enemies who were damaged by the skill but did not have their status consumed. What this means is that you just rock up into a room and all the enemies that you can see, you will see in a second, you will instantly deal 50 odd damage to all of them. Now if you multiply that by like 20 enemies, that's like a thousand damage with, at a button press with a cooldown of 19 seconds if I'm not mistaken. 19 seconds. That is just so overpowered. You haven't even gone face to face with an enemy and you've just dealt damage to them. For our boots, I'm gonna use Phoenix Force, which earns us an additional 25 anomaly power per status consumed 
by the skill for 8 seconds and it stacks up to 10 times. So if I manage to inflict burn on multiple enemies and then I overheat them, let's say that I've inflicted it on 5 enemies, that will give us an extra 125 power when I use overheat. For our weapons, you've got a few choices. First, you want a good mid-range weapon an assault rifle or a double gun or a light machine gun. I'm using this light machine gun. My one rolled with critical damage, but it rolled with shield maiden. My shots regenerate shield. And that's what you want. You want weapons to help you with your health regen, help you keep your health at a respectable level until your skills are off cooldown and you can use them again to deal massive amounts of damage. And that's the center strategy of our build. Most of our damage is dealt with our skills because we've invested so much in anomaly power and they deal massive amounts of, of damage. And our weapons are there just to get us by in between the cooldowns of our skills. For your secondary weapon, you can use a good sniper rifle, one that rolls with weapon life reach and essence, essence thief, which means that shots regenerate your health would be brilliant. Or if you choose to go a little bit more close range, you could use a shotgun, and I'll show you the one I use, like this one, and again it rolled with critical damage and essence thief. My shots regenerate my health. Let me show you how this build behaves. We'll go away with a more ranged approach first. Have a look at the enemies that are spawning in. Bam! They're all low health already. They've just spawned in and they're half HP. There's our little captain. Hello, captain. Have some of that. I'm regenerating heal shield. I can't death. Loads of enemies are shooting at me, but it's pointless anyway. Oh, lol. I love thermal bomb. Have a look at the enemies again. Do you see how many enemies I see on the screen? Have a look at all of them. I love this. This is so OP. And once you level up a few good levels into the launch and you decrease your cooldown and your anomaly power even further, this will be insane. I mean, you can just sit at the back of a room and as far as you can see, you kill every enemy. This is just so overpowered. Now let me show you how you would deal with this build if you choose to go face to face with the enemy and use a shotgun. I just rocked up a shotgun with some weapon life reach and anomaly surge on. So the way I do it is I'd go around the corner as per usual. I'd go straight for the captain, because why not? Let's show him who's boss. Get my thermal bomb, aiming at the enemy, interrupt him because he was about to do some shenanigans. And maybe a melee should be enough. And yeah, that's our enemy. Our skills keep us alive, we're regenerating shield. Let me just go somewhere where I can see all the enemies. And boom, they're dead again. This is so overpowered. It's unreal. Overheat with lower cooldowns and higher anomaly power will be insane. Now let me show you how we deal with bosses and single targets. I just want to mention first that out of all four classes, the Pyromancer will be the one that probably benefits most of the cover system. If you choose to take a mid-range to long-range approach to fights, cover will be most beneficial to you. But I've already shown how you can snipe Ghost to death with the Technomancer, so instead I will go with a closer range approach. We needed to change a few pieces of our gear as uh, our build was set up for AAE damage and dealing with multiple enemies. And in light of that, we will replace our headgear with a, a one that has Inferno Wave, which increases our heat wave damage by 30. We will uh, replace our gloves with Fire Frenzy, which gives us an extra Thermal Bomb. And that's it. So the way you would approach this fight is dealing damage with your weapon and creating health regeneration or shield regeneration and spamming your skills. One thing that you need to be aware of is that you do have three interrupts. 
so you need to make use of them good but also make sure that you always have one available so he doesn't keep casting skills on you like I just did there and now that I see that my other one is ready see he couldn't cast into that he's gonna cast ball lighting but that's not gonna affect me too much And he really can't do much. Of course, can spice it up with the melee every so often. The fight takes a lot longer than it does with a uh, pyromancer or technomancer. Oh, sorry, or a technomancer or a devastator. But I'm always at full HP. Can't really call this call this a hard fight by any stretch so yeah that's my pyromancer build i believe this is ideal for launch day because what i expect is that we will go into larger rooms with more enemies and it's going to be so satisfying to see a room full with 20 30 enemies and at the press of a button you enable overheat and you've taken all of them to half hp once we level up a little bit and decrease our cooldowns and increase our anomaly power this will be so powerful it will be unreal i believe the pyromancer has a chance of being the most overpowered character and it's good it makes the game so easy like you just saw fighting bosses not as fast as the technomancer or the devastator but also you're always at full hp you've always got interrupts at the ready so you can't get one shot at. and when you're dealing with rooms of enemies you do two or three overheats and that's it you've cleared the room this this is a easy mode glass can yeah that's how i'd call this build outriders on easy mode if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please consider leaving a comment down below maybe you could suggest some improvements to this build please consider also pressing the like button and subscribing to our channel thank you very much and i'll see you in game take care